Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of The Shelved Podcast. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. So today is going to be a little bit of a different episode. It's not going to be a script reading episode. It is going to be an interview. So I sat down with Elle Lamont, who was introduced to me through uh, Jeff Stolhand, who is somebody that I've known for uh, quite a few years now, and he's actually did an interview on the show previously. And uh, he knew that I was very excited for the movie uh, Alita Battle Angel coming out in February. And um, he, you know, asked if I would be interested in talking to Elle, who was going to be in the movie. And naturally, I said yes, on top of just being incredibly excited for that movie. Um, I am just fascinated with talking to anyone in the industry, anyone who kind of has an insight and some knowledge that, you know, is willing to share. Like I love talking to people in the business and just hearing their takes on it, hearing their story. Um, So she came on and we uh, did some talking about her career and kind of the movies she's been in and just all the different things she's done because she's kind of a jack of all trades in the uh, movie business. And it's super interesting, a super fascinating conversation. Um, she is going to be in Alita Battle Angel, which releases in on February 14th in 2019. Unfortunately, it got pushed back. It was supposed to come out in December, and I got uh, real sad about that. I actually, um, the day we recorded this podcast, it was the day it was announced, I believe, that the movie got pushed back, and I didn't know. And she actually told me before we started recording. I was just like, oh, man, just like kind of a huge bummer for me. But um. The conversation I thought went really well. Elle was very fun to talk to. Um, You know, I hope she's open to coming back one day uh, because she seems to be having a lot of interesting and cool stuff coming up. And I would love to hear about it when, you know, she's got more to say about that stuff. But uh, this conversation, uh, I think it's, you know, it's about like 40 minutes. Uh, You know, we cover a lot of stuff and I... Uh, really hope you enjoy this episode. I'm excited to have more interviews coming down the road, so be sure to check out for those in between the script episodes. But we're gonna jump right in to my conversation with L. Lamont. So I I basically just wanted to, first off, thank you for doing this. It was very generous of you to take your time out of your day to do this. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, So I kind of just wanted to start off with some of the basic, like, get to know you stuff. Uh, uh, Your name is Elle Lamont, which I will have said in the intro already. But, um, (laughs) uh, you know, I... When when Jeff kind of introduced us, I immediately just kind of go to the IMDb and read your bio. So all I kind of know is what was on there. Um, sure. So I was just curious of like kind of how you got into the business and like what kind of brought you in. Well, um, I I done I had done theater in school, but um, never really thought of pursuing it as a career path. Um, I was the gifted and talented kid on the you know AP classes and and things like that. So I graduated high school a year early and was headlong into a psychology degree. Um, which I was going to turn into a criminal profiling and behavioral analysis degree. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and uh, I I got talked into doing the Miss Texas preliminary um, that was local to my area. The gym that I worked out at wanted to sponsor someone and finally convinced me to go ahead and do it. But I won that local pageant, so I was Miss Lake Whitney. Oh, and okay. And there was a film shooting at the lake, and they saw my... Uh, my pictures on the, the promotional items for the lake and things like that. So they asked if uh, I'd be interested in being in the film. And so then <laughs> I found myself on a film set with, you know, cameras and helicopters and all kinds of crazy things going on. And I really missed that kind of, uh, that kind of environment, you know? So yeah. um, I just switched majors and changed everything. <laughs> wow. So you really, <laughs> started you, on a different path. you really just like stumbled into it then. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, 
I, I never would have really seen it as a way to to make a career for myself, to, to be able to support myself doing something like that. You know, they talk about the high failure rate. So, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's a really tough business to break into. And there's not I don't think there's many stories like yours where, you know, it's just kind of it just kind of happened. Right. Um, so, yeah. What was what was it like switching from criminal psychology into like or well, I guess what started you on that path, actually, because that's kind of interesting in its own right. Um, well, I, you know, I've always been really interested in, in what makes people tick, um, why people are the way they are, what what has brought them to the place that they're in right now. And um, so the natural path for that was psychology, you know, figuring out a more in-depth reasoning for why things happened to certain people. Yeah. And it actually, it helped as much as any of the acting classes that I took when I, when I switched majors. And, um, you know, since I've, I've done various workshops and different things like that, I'm always constantly working on my craft, but it's still that that psychology background probably helps with character analysis much more than any other class that I've taken. Yeah, I could, I can completely understand that. And I think that's something a lot of people might not realize is just how these other sources could be inspiration in the acting business. Sure. Um, you know, to play the, to play the standard stereotypes that are written and a lot of times might not require that much of a, of a background understanding of the character that you're working with. You know, say if you're talking about like commercial, um, characters and things like that. But when you're playing these characters that are, you know, avenging the death of their son or, um, you know, uh, fighting, fighting for, you know, the good versus the evil and things like that. It's a little, it's a little easier to create more unique characters if you can kind of personalize their backgrounds as well. Yeah. And and that's something I've actually noticed looking at your uh, filmography is there seems to be a fair amount of like horror and things like that. And I'm sure having that kind of background can really help in that genre. Oh yeah. Lots of action, lots of horror. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, (laughs) So you're based out of Texas and um, I mean, everyone in, you know, in the movie business, everybody thinks Hollywood. What has it been like being based out of Texas and like Austin in particular, which I know has like a pretty large film community, but many other people may not know about it. Yeah, you know, the the industry here, it, it comes and goes in waves. So we've had, you know, we've had four or five really good years in a row before something happens or our incentives get cut and then things start slowing down. Um, and I think the problem that a lot of uh, other actors here in the Austin film community have when the when the slowdown happens, they um, they don't have the ability to be mobile and go to where the work is. Yeah. But, um, you know, we... We own a little 47 Craftsman out by Lake Travis, and um, we don't have uh, the day jobs or the kids or any of the other constraints that could could keep us here. You know, if we need to pick up and move, uh, um, I say we, I'm talking about my, my partner. He's a production designer, so he's in film as well. Okay. Um, I, but, I've actually you know, heard of, of him things. through our mutual acquaintance, Jeff. Uh, I, I... Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> Joe Avaraji. Yeah, he. Uh, I, I interviewed Jeff about a short film he did, and he actually did the production design on that for their short film Rain. So he's he's told me all oh, about nice. him. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you know, if either one of us needs to go anywhere and we need to be gone for a month, we can pick up and do that. Uh, so. I think I am. I am. I'm losing you here a bit. Are you? Yeah, uh, I can hear you now. Um, kind of that that last bit about uh, between Hollywood and Texas. So yeah, as far as uh, being in Texas versus. Being in LA, um, we if you're able to have a home base, but not have anything tying you to that, so that you can be gone for a month or three, you know, in, in the opposite yeah. side of the country, and not have to worry about things like that, that certainly makes it easier. Um, I think another thing is just understanding that the film community is small everywhere. Yeah, you know, I, if I'm if I'm in LA working on something, odds are I'm going to run into at least a dozen that I. So, it, like, as as far as being between Austin and L.A., is there something that kind of draws you to Austin? Um, you know, initially it was whenever I was finishing college and I wanted to 
get into an industry where I could get into a smaller industry where I could learn the ropes firsthand. And um, I had recently seen Sin City, so oh, okay. I <laughs> really wanted to work with Robert Rodriguez. Yes. Um, and Friday Night Lights was shooting here. So I initially booked a, a recurring spot on Friday Night Lights and um, got a stand-in role in Spy Kids 4 and then just kind of worked my way up from there. I think now I've I've done nine or so projects for Troublemaker. Yeah, uh, I, I've definitely so, uh, noticed you've worked a lot with Robert. And, I mean, is he pretty much the one that's credited with, like, kind of bringing it to Austin and I mean I, I is Tarantino based out of there as well he's not he he does um do a lot of filming in the area as well but um and and so does uh Terrence Malick and yeah. um there's there's a few others that, that kind of favor Austin but he's he's the one that kind of carved out you know the standalone portion of the industry where we have a a studio that's up and running constantly with some sort of projects. And he's always expanding and trying to help, um, new filmmakers. You know, he's got the uh, rebel without a crew show going on right now where he's helping young filmmakers yeah. uh, start making their first projects and things. So I think it's just the fact that he, he's relentlessly helping the film community. Um, I don't know if he he would be credited with the one that kind of brought it here, but he's definitely the one that's helping keep it alive. Yeah, I mean, I me being on the outside, whenever I think of like Texas movie making, I he's the first name that always comes to mind, and I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people. Hmm. Um. I mean, yeah. So you've actually worked with him quite a bit. Uh, you've been in. Uh, did, uh, did he direct Machete Kills or did? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, and then he he had his hand. I don't know exactly what he was involved with with the uh, Dusted on TV show. He he directed um, he directed some of the episodes, and he would have guest directors come in for others. Um, he directed one of the three episodes that I did. I was in the first season of the show. Yeah. I'm not sure how how many he actually directly worked in on uh, season two, but. Um, but he he definitely had his hands in the you know the planning and the production design the overall look of everything yeah um, and he was there every day of course oh okay um, yeah. and then that's on is that it's basically his television network too right the El Rey network network that's right yeah yeah which I know mostly through wrestling like my day job revolves around pro wrestling and they have the Lucha Underground show so that's kind of where I've visited that network. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and did I? I think I saw on your IMDb they said uh, you were like one of the first faces of the L Ray Network. Was that correct? Yeah. So right, um, right as they were about to launch the network, they wanted to do some promo and um, called me up to do. I did a few shoots with some luchadors, and then I did a, a welder spot that plays on the the network pretty regularly. Yeah. Um, but uh, so then. You know, I was I was there for the the initial launch dinner to celebrate the launch of the network because my face was the first yeah oh, first one that was airing on the network. That's got to um, be so crazy. It's it's pretty cool. It's nice to um, you know a lot of directors have people that they you know they consistently work with because yeah you know they they know what you want you know what they're going to deliver things like that so it's it's nice to have. Uh, evokes that kind of confidence from a director of course yeah um and i like what is it what is it like being kind of like a recurring person and like a lot of his work um it's fun you know his his projects are never boring <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. for sure uh the characters are always pretty colorful um and i haven't haven't felt like any of it's playing the same type of thing over and over again. There's always some variety that I'm, that I'm offered working there. Yeah. And, uh, just, you know, the idea that like, I, I know how that crew works. Um, they, they all work really well together. Uh, they're happy, <laughs> you know, yeah. they're a happy film crew, which is definitely nice to work with. I mean, um, I think it'd be so hard yeah, to look at one of his production. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I oh, think, no, no, you're fine. I think it would be hard to look at one of his productions and not be able to just tell that everybody's having a good time. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, um, during the uh, kill scene for my character in From Dusk Till Dawn, they had filled the the dummy with blood, you know, head yeah. to toe inside of this. And they weren't sure exactly how far it was going to go. The whole the whole room was of this splash zone, and Madison and I were actually watching her murder me from Video Village. And <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it's always, it's always something interesting and fun and different. Uh, they take care of their casting crew really well over there. So yeah, it's just like hanging out with friends. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, how, and I feel like that's kind of what everyone's looking for in the business. I mean, you hear the horror stories, but like just hearing the great stories on set is one of my favorite things about the business. Like I'm a huge oh, like yeah. movie commentary track guy just because like, yeah, I love the movie, but I want to hear about the process and like what everyone was doing and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, you know, people always want to hear the the juicy gossip that happens on set. But, you know, regardless of who I've worked with and what kind of project it was on, I've had way more positive experiences with you know, well-known celebrity status actors than I have negative ones. So um, I, I like being able to talk to people that enjoy hearing, you know, the, the good, the, the fun things in yeah. the inner workings of film. I mean, it's always refreshing to hear about these people who have been in the business forever and still just, like, love every minute of it. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, on on top of Robert Rodriguez, you've worked with a lot of notable people that I saw, like, in some of the movies you've done. What are, like, some of the things that you've learned just with, like, kind of the different people you've worked with? Um, you know, even even starting out early on, I, I did a lot more, you know, watching and listening and, and just kind of seeing the, the general behavior. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to tell that the successful actors are the ones that show up uh, on time with everything together. They're not the ones creating the drama or demanding the crazy you know, additions to their trailers and things yeah. like that. Um, they're the ones that are, that are actually there to work and, you know, they, they put in a solid day's work and then they go home. Um, the, the actors who maybe think that they belong in that category are generally the ones that tend to cause more, more trouble. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the respect that, that the the seasoned veterans had for the entire process and and the jobs that the crew was actually doing in order to put the thing together, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, was definitely something that I I noted early on coming from from them and their experience. Um, on Alita, I I didn't realize until after we had wrapped, but there were five Oscars running around on that set. Oh wow! And. And yeah, and I mean everything. Everything went so well, and I, I just um, let's see. For instance, Mershala Ali. Um, he had just won an Oscar the week that we were filming his scenes, and uh, we were shooting very, very late that night. And yeah. um, everyone was very tired. And when he first came into the set, he walked up to all of us and you know the rest of the there were six other cast members in in the scene and he he thanked us all for for being there and waiting on you know waiting on him and uh it's very classy just very grateful to yeah grateful to be there and to do the job and um yeah i mean that's that's how the people that know their stuff you know operate when they're on set so yeah that that's always the stories that like it's so like heartwarming to hear oh yeah yeah um so you brought up alita which is a movie coming out uh you know relatively soon um personally february 14th yes uh i'm very disappointed to hear that it got pushed back because i'm very excited for that movie (laughs) Um, i actually like that was a movie i had heard about years ago hearing that james cameron was trying to get this movie made and then kind of forgot about Mm -hmm. it until the trailer dropped and it just blew my mind um it actually made me start reading the books actually i just finished the first book because i didn't know much about it but uh, what, mm-hmm. like, what was it like working on that movie versus like any of the other stuff you worked on? Because that seems like one of the bigger movies. Oh yeah, um, I, I think the, the budget is actually 
something like a little over $200 million. It's Oof. the largest film to come through Texas. Oh, wow. Um, so that was definitely something new uh, to be in, in that kind of area. I think up until then, um, the largest budgeted film I had worked on was maybe like 50-something, 50 56 million, something like that. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, reading reading some of the backstory about uh, James Cameron and Alita and how it had been something that he'd been working on and wanting to make for a long time and that he had he wanted to make it once the technology was there and right. And yeah. the fact that he was... He was giving the green light to uh, to that put put a lot of pressure on it as well. Um, but honestly, I I was just like a little kid again. Um, <laughs> it was all new. It was all new, and it was all so exciting. You yeah. Know? I mean, I had I've done green screen before, um, but never to to that level. I mean, we've got you know you've got cameras at every angle. You've got your motion capture yeah. here on. Um, and, uh, you know, you go in and you watch the pre-animation to kind of get an idea of what you're going to be doing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it was, it was great. And it was, uh, I was glad to be, I was glad for that particular film to be the one that I was learning all of that in. Yeah. Um, you know, to have it be something that was so important to Cameron and then, uh, for, uh, Robert to take it over and, uh, put all of his heart and soul into it too. And then to be one of the working cogs in that machine was definitely cool. It was, it was new every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and that was kind of a crazy thing seeing like produced by James Cameron directed by Robert Rodriguez. Like, Oh, that's like a team I never thought I'd hear put together. And that right. kind of just got me even more excited for the movie. Like it was one of those things that when the trailer came out, I saw it at work and I'm just like passing around to everybody like, yo, have you seen this? Like, and the, like, I got a couple of people at work now that were all just kind of waiting for that movie. Um, oh yeah. I'm, I'm definitely really excited. And you know, a lot of, um, a lot of what we did, we haven't, you know, none of us have seen the, the final outcome of, <laughs> yeah. of what we were filming. So it's, it's fun to be completely, um, what is, what is the word I'm looking for there? It's, uh, mm -hmm. usually as an actor, you at least know what happened in the scenes that you're in, Yeah, <laughs> you know, but to, to not know the, the final, to kind of be in the uh, dark about it. And, yeah. It's, it's exciting. It makes it a little, a little more interesting. Yeah, I mean, I assume it's a completely different level of filmmaking. Like, I I remember, like, some of the first big green screen movies like that. I, I always think back to, like, the Star Wars prequels where everybody would kind of start joking around about, um, you know, they could kind of be doing anything and you could fill in the background with, you know, whatever and never know it. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, every yeah, everything I mean, I've seen of it so far just looks incredible. Yeah, I know. I know a little bit of... Uh, feedback about um, the fact that he didn't use uh, an Asian actor for the role of Alita. Um, but there's, there's so much diversity in the cast. Yeah. And, and the fact that he's, he's not really the type to put any sort of like racial or gender specific parameters on any of his characters you know if, yeah. if he likes the way that that actor plays that character that's going to be who's cast in it um it was nice to see after uh, the sneak peeks and the teaser and the trailer finally came out to see everyone really getting on board and getting behind it yeah i didn't hear um, I, I know when the ghost in the shell movie came out there was a lot of that mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't hear it over alita as much but I, yeah i guess that would have been there for the people who know the source material and everything yeah, and I think a lot of it was was the fact that people weren't familiar with with uh, you know Battle Angel Alita and its yeah. background anyway. Um, the fact that that character didn't have any sort of you know um, ethnicity specified. Um, this is all futuristic, and you know she's yeah she's a cyborg. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there's all of these. Um, but I think once they once they could see something. You know, once they had had a better idea of what exactly it was about, then uh, everyone, yeah, everyone just seemed to kind of jump on board. Yeah, I, uh, ironically enough, I wasn't even seeking this out, but before we did this, um, I stumbled upon some 
clip of uh, James Cameron doing an interview for the movie talking about how the world is like a future world built on top of a previous future world. So it's kind of like it's, you know, it's this big, crazy future thing. And like, who knows what that even would look like? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm super stoked for that movie. That's like to me, there's <laughs> been like a lot of good movies this year, but there hasn't been the one that's been like, oh, that's like my movie of the year. And when I saw the trailer for that, I was like, oh, I cannot wait to see that. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm I'm super excited about it as well. Yeah. Um, so kind of backing up, talking about all the stuff you've done. I mean, you've acted, you've modeled, uh, according to your IMDB and stuff you've, you've produced, you've done second unit directing, you've worked on a screenplay. Is there kind of anything you haven't done? Um, I haven't directed yet. Um, and I, I first wound up producing and second unit directing because I was involved in a three minute short film that was kind of floundering the day before principal photography was set. Oh, to okay. <laughs> and um, so I, I came in and I, I handled a few large, large items <laughs> and got yeah. those off the list. Um, and then uh, wound up second unit directing that day as well. And that film we actually took to Cannes a couple years later and sold to Shorts International. Oh. So that was... Um, kind of like finally seeing the fruits of that maybe want to get a little bit further into producing. Um, oh, what was the I name of that the track? Lack of, it's called Recess. Recess? Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I started noticing a uh, lack of female filmmakers and, um, or female filmmakers that could actually get the support behind them to make, make their projects how they wanted. Yeah. And so um, I started doing a thing where I'll work on two short films a year that are either produced, directed, or written by uh, female filmmakers. And it's got to be two out of those three. Oh, that's great. Um, but then I'll donate my time and any sort of producing experience I have to help them get it made and get it through post-production to whichever their final preferred destination is for it. Um and I started having some fun with that, and I've got a few films in post-production and one that we're submitting to festivals right now that um, I acted and produced. But um, I, I was contacted by another production company to, to see if I wanted to direct a film. And so I started looking through some scripts, and I wasn't really seeing anything that I wanted um, or anything that spoke to me yeah. that I actually wanted to take on as a director. And um, I had recently read a story about a 17-year-old girl who struck out Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig back to back in 1931. Oh, is that and based on there's a true story? A lot of, yes, there's oh, a lot okay. of debate as to whether or not it's true, um, but it, it just kind of uh, it it kind of started to um, work its way into my brain, and so I started doing a lot of research over the summer and. Um, Joe and myself and our writing partner, uh, Michael Luxemburg, um, sat down and went to work on the screenplay. And so we wrote a screenplay about Jackie Mitchell. We wrote the, the script. We got all of the, the licensing and, and copyrights that we needed for it and submitted it to, to screenplay festivals. And it actually placed in the front at Page International last year. Oh, well, that so, sounds great. Right now, um, we are looking to either make it ourselves with me directing or option it out to uh, a female production company. Um, and that's because we've interviewed a couple different producers who have wanted to be on board with it. And they've all wanted Jackie to have a love story or Jackie to be sexier or, yeah. you know, fill in the blank with whatever kind of stereotype. Um, yeah. And so we just we want to put it in the right hands or make it ourselves. So. I might be remedying that director credit. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, that would, that would be wonderful. And I mean, you're right. Like when it comes to like female, like directors and stuff, they're the only, there's only two that come to my mind and that's like Catherine Bigelow and like Patty Jenkins. And that's just cause of like recent stuff. Right. Um, but it's definitely just there. It's not, there's not enough there. And it's like good to hear about people working towards that, making that more of a acceptable thing. 
Yeah, I think I think it's important. Um, you know, I had a had a background in modeling, and so I learned kind of business side of the entertainment industry from from that aspect of it. Um, and every year I meet a lot of new filmmakers, you know, actors and uh, crew members who, you know, they don't know how to get into the industry or they don't know how to make those the good connections or look out for the scams or whatever. And so I'm constantly trying to get that information out to them. Um, and then I was just thinking, what other ways can I do this? And, you know, donating my time to a short film is something I can easily do. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's so it's so great to hear someone with that mentality because it is. It's like a ruthless business, and I mean, it's it's something I've always aimed for. And you know, our mutual friend Jeff has always been very helpful for me and any questions I have. And it's just nice to see the people who are willing to reach out and you know, like as you as you put it, donate your time. Right. I think that a lot of people get get caught up in the idea of competition. And I mean, you're not really competing with anyone else in this industry. Like you're yeah. just competing with yourself and what you can do, what you can show people that you can do. And that's that's really at the end of the day, the that's all it is. Yeah. So and if you're helping people, <laughs> it's not hurting you in any way. No, and um, I mean, you may be making a great friend, a great connection for the future. Like there could always be something for everybody out of it. Definitely. Um, so I mean, it sounds like you have done a little bit of everything in the movie business, but like what is kind of your favorite part of the process? Is it being in front of the camera? Is it, you know, helping bring something to life? I'm definitely, and acting is in my soul. It's in my blood for sure. Um, I, I like being able to take a story in a world and all these characters that someone else has, has written and then help translate that for people so that they have some sort of physical, emotional reaction to it. You know, there's something about that yeah. part of it that that speaks to me the most. Um, so I don't think I'll ever stop being in front of the camera, but I have I have enjoyed this year. I've done, you know, been more. Um, I've been more politically active, so I've done a lot of PSAs and helped with a lot of things like that, getting getting the vote out, getting people registered to vote. Yeah, um, very important in our and times. So, I've I've tried to come to you know now I'm to the point where I can I can solely support myself on acting and so using my free time to be able to do those other aspects that are actually helping other people in the in the industry and things I think are probably higher priority than say directing or producing something at this point. Yeah. Um so I mean is directing kind of the one thing left? that like that's like the thing you really want to you know try your hand at and haven't done is there anything else that like one day you could see yourself trying to go for um you know that's that's really it um when when i was going to school for acting we were we were taught all of the other aspects of filmmaking so that you had a little bit of a background and understanding in each department and what each person was doing um so I've done at least a little bit of every other aspect and then and kind of pick and chose based on what, what I was better at and what I enjoyed doing more. Um, but that's the only thing that I hadn't done yet. And I think part of it was because I wanted to make sure that I actually was ready to. Um, yeah. You know, I've worked, with, I've worked with directors who are great crew directors. And they, can, they can make a film set function in a way that is fantastic, but they don't know how to talk to the actors. Yeah. And so hopefully they've just cast really great actors that, you know, already the characters that they want them to in the way they want them to. You know, I've worked with directors who um, were great at sitting down and in the right space and, and allowing them, uh, you know, to experiment and play around with it and things. But, if it weren't for their crew, they wouldn't be able to pull the film off. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I had a, a pretty good understanding of both sides of things. Um, you know, I wanted to, to not command respect, but have uh, a mutual respect to and from my cast crew before I decided to direct something. Yeah. Um, um, 
I've always... And we also, when we were we were starting our production company uh, a couple years ago, we decided that we wouldn't work on a production until we were able to pay everyone. And, you know, <laughs> our rents might not be too great on our first couple productions, but uh, it's just that, that idea of letting people know that they are um, appreciated and respected and that their talent is acknowledged on yeah, their set. Yeah, that they're valued. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I've always kind of been under the impression that actors turn directors often make great directors because they do have that knowledge of they know what it's like to be on the other side. And, you know, actors do kind of interact with kind of everyone on a set almost. Right. Yeah. So um, I I think that's kind of all the questions I have for you. Um, I really <laughs> appreciate I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. This is something you didn't have to do and you were willing to do it. So. Oh yeah, it was fun. Um, I uh, I appreciate being here. Oh no problem. And if there's anybody you know that you think might have fun coming on, be sure to let them know about me. Of course, we'll do. <laughs> um, so is there is there anything you have to promote coming up or kind of in the near future here? Um, right now, our short film from my production company, Five One Two Art Department, is in the festival circuit. And I have a feature film called The Next Kill that just released in Brazil. And um, we were promoting it at the Austin Comic Con. So it's going to be at a few more festivals. You might want to look out for it soon. It's a crazy animated car explosions, gunfire calamity. It's, it's going to be good to watch. It's yeah. interesting. Um, is, there, is there any place people can find out where it will be? Like which festivals and things? Um, right now, they, they are keeping everybody up to date on their Instagram page, and that is hashtag the next kill, at the next kill. Um, they've got a Facebook page out as well. I'm not sure if they have any other sort of way that they're keeping everyone uh, up to Yeah, uh, everybody should at least be able to find it through the Facebook and the Instagram, so that should that should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I really appreciate you sitting down to do this. Um, it's been a blast talking to you and very informative. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, uh, thank you for coming on. <laughs>